Hey guys, it's Kat from the Motor Home Travel website, Wandering Bird. Today I wanted to share with you some tips for using the app Park for Night to find overnight parking spots with your motorhome or camper van. It's a question we get asked all the time, so I wanted to share some little tips and tricks for you. Now what I'm going to be sharing with you today is actually part of a lesson from our Wild Camping Toolkit which is a step-by-step -step guide with videos and text and checklists and all the sorts of other things that you need to help you figure out exactly how to go wild camping or off-grid parking if you prefer with your motorhome or camper. Now, if you are new to wild camping or off-grid overnighting and you want a little bit of help figuring it all out how you do the power and the waste and the water and everything then i'll leave the link to that entire course below and you can grab it as you wish but here's a short snippet from one of the lessons in there which will give you a bit of a step-by-step -step walkthrough on the app park for night a couple of quick things before we start if you're new to the channel hi welcome we share lots of tips and tricks for traveling with your motorhome around the uk and europe if you'd like to know more about that by all means click subscribe and the little bell next to it which will tell you when we have a new video out if you're not already a member of our facebook group we would absolutely love to have you join us i'll leave the link below and lastly if you're brand new to wild camping with a motorhome never done it before and want some essential tips to get you started there's a free checklist that you can download print off take with you when you travel i'll leave the link to that below no obligations at all you can just download that with you and off you go all right i think that's everything from me so i will jump into showing you how we use park tonight so first thing I would do is log into Park for Night. I always start with Park for Night, even when I'm in the UK. Search for sites is just as good. Um, it's not so good in Europe. Park for Night is generally better, but Search for Site does have a pay to it, whereas Park for Night is free. So I tend to start off with Park for Night. I only really ever use Camper Contact when we've got the motorbikes on a trailer, which makes us a lot longer. But now that our motorhome is shorter, we've gone from a 7.8 motorhome to a 6.7, um, and we've got back to under three and a half tons. I find that I don't use Camper Contact as much because that extra meter actually makes quite a big difference in what we can and cannot get into. So I only use that as kind of a last resort if I can't find anything on Park for Night. So we start off, here's the main homepage on Park for Night. There are various options you could do. You could put in the name of the point if you're heading somewhere specific. You could put in the country. We could put in Scotland there. I tend to just click on the map. I know where we are. If I don't know where we are, I can use the Google Maps on my phone to give us an exact location. But obviously, I'm very rarely looking around where I actually am at that moment. I'm looking for about an hour or two hours down the road. So let's imagine that we have driven up from Scotland. Sorry, we've driven up from Portsmouth towards Scotland. We are, so we've gone the whole of the length up England, and we're looking for somewhere probably somewhere around the border so we can stay for the night before we continue on our journey. We want to avoid all campsites and we want somewhere to stay that's out in the wild. Now that doesn't necessarily mean free. For us, we will quite happily pay five, sometimes even ten pounds for a night, ideally ten pounds to have some sort of services with it. But we're more than happy to spend five pounds for a night if it gives us somewhere safe to stay where we know that we'll be welcome, we're not going to be moved on in the middle of the night. And also that helps support the local economy. I think it's really important, especially in the UK, to uh, support the places that are prepared to let motorhomes and camper vans stay overnight so that they realise it's a good investment of their time and effort. So here's the border between England and Scotland. We're going to stay somewhere to the southwest. This whole area is the southwest 300, and we've never done it. So it'd be really interesting actually to see what kind of places are provided on the route. So I zoom into where we want to go and I just click search at this location. The internet is quite slow when I'm recording my screen by the way, so just bear with me. So as you can see, lots and lots of overwhelming things have popped up. So what I'm going to do is click on the filters and I'm going to get rid of, yeah we don't want to be tracking our time, I'm going to get rid of all the things that I'm not interested in. So free motorhome area, yes I want paying motorhome area. I'm going to keep that because even five pounds a night could be a paid motorhome area. Private car park, I'm going to keep it. Picnic area, I'm going to keep it. Now, in Europe, I would probably get rid of the rest area because obviously that's a motorway rest area. However, in the UK, for some reason, 
people, because obviously people are putting these places in. It's not a company who's doing it. It's people just like you and me who are inputting these places. In the UK, people on the side of a road are putting it as a rest area. So I tend to leave it on. Service area without parking, we're not interested in. Campsites, we're not interested in. Homestays, that's literally where somebody said you can stay on my drive. Not interested in that. On the farm is quite interesting because that's almost like grit stops. So farms, vineyards, local businesses will give you somewhere to stay for the night. Um, normally just a car park, probably not any facilities at all. There is an expectation that you will have a drink in the pub or you will buy a bottle of their wine or you'll buy something from the local farm shop. And if you're going to do that anyway, then on the farm is always a pretty good option to look at. But for the purposes of this, in fact, I tell you what, no, we'll leave it on. Off-road. Now, off-road's just for 4 by 4 vehicles, so a motorhome is not going to do that. Parking lot day and night I'd keep. Day parking only is useless for us. We want somewhere for overnight. And surrounded by nature is one of my favorite ones. We also find some brilliant spots surrounded by nature. So those are my filters that I would use for this particular evening. It's got rid of a few of them, but not much. So then we just start zooming in. Now, I'm going to pretend... I can either pretend that we're going straight up to Glasgow and pick some up the motorway, but I tell you what, now let's pretend we're going to do this Southwest 300. So we've already driven several hours. We're not going to want to go too far off our route, and we're also not going to want to go like down here. That's probably, it's quite hard to tell when you're on smaller road, if you don't know the area, how fast that is and how far you can go. On a motorway, you know obviously in an hour you're going to do roughly 70 miles an hour. But on the smaller road, it's quite hard to judge. So I would probably pick somewhere that's quite close to it, because by that point, we'll be ready to stop. So, I mean, I generally don't start looking until about an hour, an hour and a half before. So I would be somewhere around the Yorkshire Dales, Lancaster, maybe even just crossing the Lake District when I start looking. You might want to start looking before you even leave so that you've got an idea on the kind of place that you're going to end up. But just bear in mind that you can, of course, change your mind if you've either travelled up quicker than you thought you were going to and you want to go a little bit further, or if you've got stuck in traffic and you haven't got as far as you want to. That's why I don't really start looking until we know roughly where we are and where we want to stop. So now I literally will zoom in. We've decided that we're going to come down this road and stay somewhere around here. So I'd probably start looking around these ones. And literally just click on them and see what they say. Bear with me, internet. So, First thing I would look for, is there a picture? Yes. Are there reviews? Yes. So this is a good start. So I hope you found that useful. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you want to hear a little bit more about our thought process and our personal reasons for choosing to stay somewhere or not stay somewhere else, then by all means grab the toolkit. I'll leave the link below. At the moment, the toolkit is on sale. I can't guarantee how long for. A lot of that's going to depend on when you're watching this video. But when it comes out, it is on sale for a pretty sizable discount for the next uh, little while, at least. So if you are interested in learning a bit more about how to wild camp with your motorhome, then by all means, it's there for you if you want it. Right, I think that is everything from me. I hope you and yours are all safe and well, and I'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye.